So today we are going to be taking a look at Windows Phone 7 and uh, it's a brand new operating system that, uh, for smartphones that Microsoft just came up with. A total revamp of what we used to know as Windows Mobile. And the device that we're going to be looking at um, you know, to use to demo Windows Phone 7 is the LG Optimus 7. It's one of the devices that is already on sale in Singapore. Uh, that is running on Windows Phone 7. We're not going to be going through the hardware because it's about Windows Phone 7 today. If you want to find out more about the hardware, we will have an episode up with regards to the LG Optimus 7. So I'm going to take you through the operating system, kind of let you get a feel of what is it like as well as some of the cool stuff and the not so cool stuff. Okay, so let's just start from the outside in. Let's start with the lock screen. And um, I'm quite fond of this particular lock screen. It's very clean. You know, you can have a nice photo or wallpaper, and it will kind of show you the time, the date, in big words, no shadows, no fancy whatever, and as well as the upcoming calendar events, as well as alerts. So, for example, if you have you know um, unread emails, incoming SMSs, and missed phone calls, they'll all appear down here, which I really like. Some smartphone operating systems actually eliminated all these things, and um, that's not very cool. But um, apart from that, you can also look at other information. So apart from, so you can see, you know, your battery and stuff like that. But if you push the volume control, you can change the volume. Remember, the screen is still locked. Okay, so you can change the volume control, as well as uh, set the screen, the phone from uh, ring to vibrate, and control the uh, the audio player as well. So that's uh, what you can actually do. And unlocking it is, a, is as simple as swiping the lock screen like this. And the first thing that you see right here is the start screen. And the start screen is pretty much where everything, well, starts on the phone, right? And uh, th these little boxes here are uh, pretty much a cross between an application shortcut as well as a widget, right? And uh, this is actually, it's very clean design again. This is something that you will find throughout the entire operating system. Everything is clean, no extra shadows, no 3D objects, something that seems to be very common nowadays. Um, in, in uh, user interfaces. This one is totally the other way around. Um, which, like I said, they actually display information as well. So for example, if I actually have um, an email, an incoming email, they'll actually show you the numbers. And this number that we'll show here isn't actually an unread count, and I'll explain a little bit later. Okay. And uh, so over here you have, uh, for example, you have the calendar, and the calendar will show you the, the upcoming calendar events, and so on and so forth, missed calls. And they're quite dynamic. So in the sense of the picture uh, icon, for example, will actually show you one of the photos in your library, right? The messaging will show you the last um, new incoming messages. The Xbox Live little widget will actually show you your Xbox avatar, and then the people widget will show you your friends' pictures. The you know if you put people tag people onto the screen, which you can, you will actually have you know faces of their faces and their profile pictures appearing and changing. Uh, as they change their their profiles and things like that, um, the Zoom little, the music player application shows you the last uh, artist that you actually were you were actually browsing in the Zoom music store, which is very cool. All right, and you can also tag things like uh, you know websites and stuff like that. So it, it's kind of pretty much you know uh, a balance between uh, letting you see information that you know you want to see something that was famous on Windows Mobile at the same time while keep it you know, cool looking. You know, Windows Mobile it used to do that, but it, you know, it just looks very old and boring. And if you actually flick towards the right, you get the application launcher, and basically it's a up to down, up down list, right? And you just scroll up to down, and it's right now it's quite okay because you know you start using the phone, you have at most you know four or five applications. But imagine with me if you actually start getting like 20, 30 new applications that you start purchasing and downloading. And um, this list will start to get very, very long, and there's no way to actually quickly jump from the list to another. So what you would actually end up having to do is to tag, you know, to pull, let's say, for example, the photo style list. You press and hold, and actually you need to start pinning certain applications that you expect to use very often onto the front. And then subsequently you can press and hold, and uh, pretty much shift things around, around the, t the start screen. Okay, so that's the start screen. Um, let me just talk a little bit about the physical controls while we're here. So you have the back button, and this back button is contextual. So um, if you are in an application, you go, this one will actually bring you backwards in terms of uh, just imagine it like the Android's back button, except that you know when even when you're on the start screen and you hit the back button, it brings you back to the last application that you were launching as well. 
this is the start button it actually brings you to the start screen and if you press and hold it it will actually you know do a voice recognition for you which uh, which is quite interesting and the search button is a contextual search button if you put in push in the start button it will bring you to a Bing if you actually put it in somewhere else say the email the email application which I'm gonna do right here you know hit the search button it will actually allow you to search your emails which uh, which will be very useful and uh, speaking of the start button the start button doesn't actually help you turn on the screen unlike in iOS and Android right uh, where you can actually hit the home button and the screen will turn on you need to press the the power switch on the top so in the case of the Optimus 7 the power switch is actually very small so it can be a little bit um, you know difficult to push the button and find the button to, to, to press so that's one of the things that um, it's not so cool with regards to Windows Phone 7 let's take a look at the email application and um, it's a very nice email application. Actually, shows everything very cleanly. The word, the fonts are big, and things like that. And you can uh, scroll it sideways to quickly filter to unread emails, to flagged emails, urgent emails, and things like that. You can also select emails, so you can actually tick multiple emails. For example, and you can mark them as read. Um, and then right here at the bottom, this is something that's quite common uh, throughout the user interface. It's a little contextual kind of thing. So which I really like, right? There's no press and hold to right click, there's no funny contextual buttons, uh, a lot of messy stuff like you see on Android. It's, it's very um, obvious what, what you can actually do. It's, it's very visible to you and basically you just push this and it will show you, you know, what these buttons actually mean. At the same time, you know, all the other extra features such as settings and things like that. So in this case, I can actually mark things as red, right? And then I can change settings. Uh, by you know going through this little contextual menu at the bottom okay so uh, for email accounts they actually support a lot of stuff they support uh, both uh, Microsoft Exchange, Gmail, Yahoo and uh, Hotmail and things like that and um, you know you can add them in and each account will actually appear as its own individual icon so right now this is the Outlook account which is used to represent Microsoft Exchange if I actually add a Gmail account using the Gmail settings not the Exchange settings and a Windows Live account and so on and so forth the icons will appear separately so then actually different accounts will be shown separately on the start screen okay and let's take a look at the messaging application and the messaging application is pretty much uh, like how most um, SMS applications look like on other operating systems. You know, it's threaded. You see it in conversation view, and you can actually. Uh, it's a good chance for me to show you the keyboard, which is actually not too bad. So, like for example, the quick, oops, the quick. So you can see that uh, not only do they actually attempt to predict forward, but they also give you a list of suggested uh, words for, through um, from a dictionary. And the keyboard is actually not too bad, it's quite smart. Uh, I have a little bit of typos because there's a camera between my face and the phone. But you know, most of the time it is actually very close to what you'll find on Android as well as the iOS because the keyboard is actually not based on an English dictionary but based on the position of your fingers. So making it um, most of the time able to predict it the words quite well which I'm quite fond of so um, yeah and of course you can actually rotate it sideways and then you get a landscape keyboard as well this is through this is uh, true um, throughout the entire Windows Phone 7 but the cool thing about Windows Phone 7 is how well it actually links together services online services so for example you can actually add Facebook accounts so let me just show you if I go into the settings screen right here you can see that uh, oops, under accounts I can actually add Facebook accounts and things like that and what that does is that it actually helps you link you know it will attempt to do that uh, it will attempt to link together your exchange contacts your Facebook contacts and uh, your Windows Live Messenger contacts together and turn it into one thing and pull out information that might be relevant to you so uh, this is where the people hub they call this hubs actually uh, this is where the people hub comes in when you push this so this is this is the address book on Windows Phone 7 but it's not just that when you scroll it sideways it'll show you Facebook updates right from the friends in your contact book uh, yeah contact address book and then the recent people that you actually interacted with and for example in this case let's take a look at Justin right uh, and you can see that apart from the usual stuff like how to call his mobile phone and things like that you can actually also jump to um, his Facebook to see what is his latest Facebook updates 
And so you can see right here, this this uh, this contact actually has both is coming from go both Google, my Google contacts as well as Facebook contacts, and they managed to link these two together. And if you want to link more, most of the time it does it quite well, uh, but there sometimes they miss it out. And uh, so if you just hit this button, and they will suggest to you. In this case, they found out uh, they discovered Justin's Windows Live contact is also inside here, and you can actually link them together. So uh, I found that the, their linking is much better compared to say you know uh, what was that phone the ink the ink uh, INQ phones that we <clears throat> we took a look at the last time the linking is kind of virtual they are not actually modifying your address book context which is very good and uh, one thing you can do is that you can ask it to only show you contacts that that are that have multiple accounts what I mean is that if you have 500 Facebook friends but only when I say 20 of them are in your address book, then you will only see the 20 of them. You won't see all 500 of your Facebook friends. Making sure that your address book still is still usable as an address book. And uh, here's another interesting thing that I want to show you. You know how on the, on the iOS you can actually touch, there will be actually little characters on the side, let's say from A to Z, that allows you to jump through the list. On Windows Phone 7, they do it with these little blue boxes here. So you hit this blue box and say, I want to go to DK. So I just hit D and it'll jump to the D part of the list. And then I'll straight away be able to go into um, his account and see his Facebook profile and things like that. So that is the part of, this is part of uh, how they, you know, the linking is happening. And it's very useful, uh, really. And you can actually pull people's faces to the front here. So for example, I want to tag uh, Justin onto the front of my screen. I just press and hold and I say pin to start and uh, I will be able to keep track of uh, what he is up to at any point in time. So that is uh, the, one of the cool services that they're linking to. The other one that they link to is Xbox Live. So uh, my, Windows Phone 7 actually has um, the marketplace which allows you to purchase applications but for the games they are actually capable of um, being, uh, building them on uh, Xbox Live. So what this means is that whenever you unlock achievements inside these games you will actually be updating, increasing your Xbox live uh, gamer score.